Today there was supposed to be a large uh, demonstration organized in San Jose, which would have focused on four issues. Language, the building of a prison in Inosinda, strengthening local self-government, and also the genocide question. This um, demonstration uh, was called for today, um, but the organizers of the demonstration, um, together with the Georgian authorities, decided to postpone this demonstration um, until later in November. Um, because, as you probably, some of you might know, another demonstration is planned soon in Tbilisi uh, by the opposition, um, which is already taking a lot of focus uh, to Tbilisi. So the, this demonstration has been postponed and will most probably happen in a few weeks. Um, but I think it's quite indicative because what it shows is that some of the main issues, say some of the main problems um, which the Armenian population has um, in Georgia. Now, I'm going to be using the term Armenian population. Um, however, I want to underline that most of these people living in Georgia are Georgian citizens um, with Georgian passports and so on. So it's perhaps a little bit wrong for me to talk about Armenians in this context. Um, we could also talk about Georgian Armenians or Armenian Georgians, but I will use just for simplicity in my own presentation uh, the term Armenians. Um, what I'd like to, to talk about is really what has happened since the, the uh, Rose Revolution in Georgia and since President Saakashvili is coming to power. It has been a very interesting time because on one hand, um, the Georgian government has tried to centralize and become a strong state after, um, really, it was a failed state under Shevardnadze. Um, on the other hand, it has also tried to integrate its minorities. Very often, there's a dilemma and a clash between these two different interests, of building a strong state and building a state where minority rights are fully protected. We can see that there has been some drastic improvements uh, over the past couple of years. Um, if we look at Georgia in general, um, we see that there's much more effective and honest law enforcement, that there's more regular payments of pensions and um, of social services, and in general there's been a creation of a much stronger army. So we can say that Georgia has become in some ways a stronger place. Um, there's also been a very strong fight against corruption. Now this has um, influenced the hiring policies of state authorities. And as I will explain later, this is something that has been quite problematic, especially in terms of Georgia. Um, just as a, a background, just to, to remind you, um, there are approximately 250,000 ethnic Armenians living in Georgia. Um, there's about 280,000 ethnic Azeris living in Georgia. Um, about half of the ethnic Armenians, uh, about 120,000, live in Sapska Javaheti. Sapska Javaheti. includes, well, in Sapska Javaheti and Salka, sorry, which is another small municipality. Um, Sapska Javaheti includes um, some municipalities which are uh, majority ethnic Armenian and some of them which are not. So some, many of you are probably more used to the term Javaheti, which focuses on the uh, municipalities of Nino Sminda and Alhambalaki. I have to admit that in our report, we use the term Samska Javaheti, um, which includes other uh, municipalities which are not only um, ethnic Armenian majority, um, because this is the way the Georgia government uh, does it. So when you look at the distribution of the territorial distribution within Georgia, the, uh, within Georgia, it's officially Samska Javaheti, which is the region, not Javaheti by itself. So, um, there are tensions in Samska Javaheti, and some of these tensions have been increasing since Saakashvili has come to power. There is a fear, for example, law enforcement and judges. Um, here we also found that Armenians tend to be uh, slightly underrepresented. So, for example, um, in the criminal police, out of 284 officials, only 72 uh, are Armenian. Now what I want to also do here is talk to you specifically about the reform of local self-government. Um, there has been a reform that started in 2005 in Georgia, um, which has done away with the lowest level of government. So in the past you had village councils. Um, now those no longer exist, and the first level of government is the municipality. So that really means that 
for the Armenian po population, there is only the municipal level um, where they can clearly uh, express their views, clearly um, be represented. So this is in some ways a cutting down of the, air, the room for representation um, because previously it existed in the village and obviously there are many, many more villages which have an Armenian uh, majority. Um, this is also important to note um, when we're thinking about the elections. Um, there were elections in 2005 of the municipal level. Um, and in these elections, um, there were some, some problems. And I would say that in our perspective, the biggest problem was that the electoral units um, did not reflect um, the actual population. So some electoral units, for example, had 200, 300, 400 voters while well, other elect electoral units had up to 7,000 voters. Here, one could see a form of discrimination because in many cases, in several cases, um, we had very, very uh, poorly populated electoral units which were Georgian dominated, and you had very largely uh, populated electoral units which were um, Armenian majority. So just thinking, for example, of the South de l'Union Européenne et du Parlement Européen, qui est le Conseil de l'Europe. Et le Conseil de l'Europe a convenu d'une convention cadre pour la protection des minorités et des personnes. Et on voit des, des enquêteurs, on voit des observateurs. C'est le cas même en Belgique pour la protection de minorités francophones dans la partie flamande du pays, par exemple. Euh, mais il faudrait savoir dans quelle mesure cette convention...